3 a.m. 3 a.m. 3 in the morning. What was that? It sounded like a door opening. Oh, just like from a dorm? No, it sounded like something squeaky. Yeah, it was like a squeaky door, but like there's literally no doors near us. <laughs> okay. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Cause I heard that shit too. I don't think I got it on video. It sounded like a fucking door. I've never been like, let's leave a place before, but I don't like that. I used to go to LIU Post and I was only there one semester, but I heard so many crazy stories about how this place is haunted. And so I came back and I was like, let's go investigate. Let's see if this place is really haunted. And I contacted the school and I nagged and nagged and nagged and they finally got back to me and sent me a list of the reported incidents. Legend has it that CW Post's niece, Emily Post, loved to play in the labyrinth. After long days of riding horses at the family estate, Emily would retire to the labyrinth and sing in the wishing well. So apparently there was some like man, I don't know, cause, cause the paragraph they sent me just skips to this. The reports from Emily and searches became more frequent and to her frustration, she was forbidden from playing outside until the man was found. I don't know who this man is. The paragraph just skips to that. After three nights, Emily snuck away from her room and left a note for uncle CW telling him that she was going to find her friend and would soon return. That's the friend that got lost in the dollhouse from Kiara's story. However, Emily never came Came back to the mansion that evening. The next day, her uncle found the note and checked the labyrinth. He was horrified to find Emily dead in the wishing well. When her body was removed, they found welts and bruises all over her. I'm a resident assistant and they do ghost tours for incoming freshmen. And I was positioned to be in the dollhouse, but I had to sit in it for an hour and a half by myself in the dark because I was like a ghost scaring freshmen and just like being in there like you just got the weirdest energies and like that feeling that something is staring at you it was like so creepy and like i was so happy to get out of there when i was able to get out of here that dollhouse is kind of sketch the story supposedly behind it is that the little girl the niece had um like emily emily okay, yeah. okay. she had a friend and her friend would come over and obviously play on the playhouse and so essentially one day her and her friend went in there she came back after being missing for a few days. What? And the friend never came back. The two were missing? The both of them went in there and they were missing. And she came back and her friend did not come back. Like, so like, they, so they stayed in the dollhouse the whole time? They said that she did some tunnel or something like that. Like there was a tunnel underneath and that they would go and like play. That's what I've heard. What? I don't know how factual that is. Oh, that's insane. But that they would have that. And then one day, Emily came back and her friend never came back. Like that was it. Did the friend get killed? Was the we friend don't not know. real? Like Emily would not speak about her afterwards. Wait, was the friend definitely real? No, the friend was real. Okay, okay. It was a real girl. Okay, okay. Her family came looking for her, but like they never found any of her. What do you think happened? Do you think I don't know. Her? I feel like Emily is a little sketch, low key. I'm not even gonna lie. She yeah, had that were random. Death was really fucking weird. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe some random shit was following her, and it finally caught up with her. I don't Maybe know. They got the friend, and then they got her. Maybe. Maybe, because she was gone for a few days too. Like they were yeah, both how do you get lost in that dollhouse? It's a very small dollhouse. It's not big. And nobody's alone in it. It's not used for anything. In the past, it's been used as an alumni building, but I think it was actually a dollhouse when the original people owned the property. They built it for them to like play on. You hear stuff coming from it. Like if you're walking on the path, you hear shit coming from it. Wait, you, I don't know if I'm crazy, but you low-key can hear something. Nah, I think I'm crazy. I don't I think know. It's like squirrels? It could be, but like, but I just don't know nice, what's happening. Story. I don't like sitting there, especially at the nighttime. Oh, hell no. Do you get a weird feeling? I do. I don't like the feeling that I get from that. The windows are boarded. Oh, they are? Yeah. So there's also, I think that also might just be like... Spirit Box is not picking anything up until I get to the front of the dollhouse. Is this a woman? I just heard woman. What happened to Emily's friend? Oh, fuck. Emily. 
Okay, she say Emily. What? I don't like it. Hmm? The vibes over here are so different than the vibes over at the dollhouse. Marjorie Merriweather Post lived a lavished and privileged life. She was married four times but bore no children. Instead of children, she filled her life with cats. Marjorie owned hundreds of cats in her lifetime. Legend says during the Great Depression that the Post estate had to let some of the groundskeeper and other staff go. A landscaper named Seamus McCormick was enraged after his firing. Left with no job and no income, he decided to get revenge against the family. Seamus hatched a plan and kidnapped one of Marjorie's cats. Seamus beat the cat to death and hung its lifeless body over one of these seven gates. From time to time, students have reported to see a cat hanging from one of the gates. Okay, let's walk through. theater buildings are really haunted. One time when I was in the theater film building, I was rehearsing late at night with my friend Justin and it was completely empty, no one was there. It was also COVID, so like people weren't really doing a lot. And we heard snapping from the hallway during our scene and it was like an intimate moment and it was kind of dark and like kind of a scary moment in the scene. And that was really weird. And we went in the hallway and no one was there and no one was in the entire building. So that's really weird. They say it's haunted by Marjorie Post. My flashlight, it, my phone didn't film it for some reason. I thought I could film it. It was filming at one point, but my flashlight was glitching out. They know I'm here. This was never one of the places I felt like was haunted. Um, I've heard stories about just like doors opening and like lights turning on and off. CW posted it on his wife. I don't know if, if it was the wife or the like, other woman. One of them jumped out the window of Suffolk. Like where Suffolk was. Yeah. The freshman quad, like it has four buildings, but like last year they only used Kings, Queens, and Nassau. They didn't use Suffolk. People used to live there and they're like, oh, like people can't live there anymore. Like it's too haunted. Like, yeah, people, people would getting, complain. Like, yeah. We had a doorknob, like not like the regular keypad things because ours broke the first day there. No one can explain it. We were locked in our room several times. One of the times we got locked in our room, they had to replace it with a doorknob that you would have to manage manually lock, like you would have to turn the lock. But it would open by itself 3 a.m., no explanation. And me and my roommate just got accustomed to it and like would stay in our beds and be like, well, it's gonna keep happening throughout the night. There's no point in getting up to fix it. So essentially we lived half of our freshman year with our third roommate that we named Marjorie Mayweather Post because she was like the mistress of this like estate, essentially. That's what we lived with. The doors would open randomly at 3 a.m., like into 3 a.m. to like 4 a.m. So it would open sometimes, at, or sometimes in the middle of the night, but it was around, it was always around 3 a.m., which I found weird because like, we know what 3 a.m. is associated with. The other building that I experienced a lot in was my freshman year dorm building. I'd wake up every once in a while at like 3 a.m. It was always 3 a.m. or 3.07 every time I checked the clock. It was always around 3 a.m. And I'd like feel something from the corner of my room. Like I'd feel like, you know that feeling of something watching you sleep or like watching you? I'd get that. That was horrendous and it would happen more and more frequent. And then one night I had like a dream about it and I woke up like with the feeling of like something's hands around my throat, so that was horrifying. Last semester, Carson and I had a few plants, and one of them was in a like glass vase on Carson's side of the room over here. So one day we were both sleeping, and we woke up, and it was shattered on the floor. 
but like there was it was like nowhere near her head because she sleeps over here there it was nowhere near like where she could have like swatted it or anything or like it was just on the floor broken but then she was like i don't know why she ended up opening the window but she was like oh the window's open i'm just gonna close it a little bit she closes it the tiniest bit because it's only open like this much she closes it it falls in and shatters the window yeah so with broken glass on the floor we don't know how it happened and then right after she sees that she goes closes the door and then it shatters and then yeah wow i live in like the suites like greek housing and there have been so many instances where i'll literally be like in bed pajamaed eyes shut ready to fall asleep like i've been in bed for like 20 minutes trying to fall asleep and then out of nowhere something will just fall off my desk it could be like a water bottle or a pen or like one of my desk decorations or something and it'll just randomly fall off and there's not like a vent or anything near my desk that would just make it fall off so i've had that happen to me at least three or four times my friends would be in my room and we'd be like hmm what's that and we would like look and no one would be at the door and we would hear it like move and see the handle jiggle the light like lamp lamp posts or light posts that are around campus there have been so many instances where I'll be walking like back from dinner, like we have a dining hall called Winnick, and every single time I walk back from it, this one particular light post near the chapel will shut off the second I walk past it and start like fluttering and acting silly goofy, and then I walk past it and it's back to being normal. And it's not just that lamppost, it happens like to multiple ones on campus where you'll just be walking and then all of a sudden it'll shut off as soon as you walk past it and then it goes back on. And I don't know if it's an electrical issue, but like I just get like weird vibes and like weird energy near the one that's specifically behind um, Riggs Hall when I'm walking back from the dining hall. Every single time without fault, that light will shut off while I walk past and it'll like flutter and then go back to being normal. It's the strangest thing. So the lights always flicker all around campus and we just walk past them and say, hi Marjorie, because it's probably Marge, our best friend. psychologist at LIU Post. As a professor in psychology, he would typically include conditioning experiments where rats would be trained to pull levers and receive food and other similar experiments. A psychology student named Rachel was staying late one evening in the Levitas laboratory and she noticed something strange. She saw a slight crack in the walls, so she peeled back the paint and discovered a hidden cupboard. Rachel opened the cupboard doors and gazed upon something gruesome and disturbing. Legend has it that Rachel found jars and vials filled with rat limbs and organs. <laughs> what? Actually, I feel like the cupboard was a little more discreet than this. <laughs> a crack in the wall, revealing a cupboard. Oh my gosh, men's literally right here, but women. Fuck Do I want us to get killed in this fucking alleyway? Why is it kind of creepy? My scariest story happened last year. I was in a new play festival. It happened right after our production of Hedwig and the Angry Inch. If you know anything about Hedwig and the Angry Inch, the beginning of it starts with the cast talking about like the resident ghost of the theater and it changes depending on the location. So for us, it was Marjorie. And so like for a weekend or however long they were in the theater for rehearsing, they had been like calling out on Marjorie and being like, better leave us alone or whatever and like making fun of it whatever was happening so like that week that my show was rehearsing like little things were happening and then one day one of the people that worked at the theater comes running in and they were like hey and does anyone have the keys for this room like some things are happening and i need to like get into the room i walk into the theater and the lights like the stage lights are on and they were red and there was like this super loud feedback coming from the speakers we go to check it out somebody finds the company manager and gets the keys because there's literally no one else who would have had the keys and he hadn't been in that in, in the main stage the whole time like the whole time that we were rehearsing and the door was locked so we like go up there i start getting like this icky vibe from the door and he like goes and finds his keys and unlocks the door and opens it and when i tell you it, it felt like something came like out of that door it was so horrendous. I was not the only person that felt it. It was disgusting. It was cold. And it was like, I had to leave this place. And I ran down the stairs. And I was like, I am getting out of here. And I was like praying. And I was like, please, like, whatever's in there, like, don't come messing around me anymore. Still, no one knows why everything was turned on. It was just, like, so creepy and weird.
So I was in the mansion once and there was a little kid spirit, we think, because my friend and I were sitting in there just like chatting for like a while. And we were sitting on these two chairs in like the student lounge room and his phone went missing and we were like, bro, what the fuck? Like it was right here, it made no sense. We tore the entire room apart for like an hour searching for this phone because we hadn't left that room. And it neatly tucked into this piece of fabric in the chair that like the way we were sitting, we couldn't have reached. So what? it was like neatly tucked into this perfect little pocket of fabric. Charles William Post was an American industrialist who assumed an enormous fortune during his lifetime. However, his remarkable successes caused him an immense stress. He was known to scream at the top of his lungs when he was stressed or angry. His screams could be heard from across the estate. The loudest of his screaming occurrences would typically occur in the mansion where he was hidden away from his neighbors. These occurrences were so terrible and violent that he would break furniture and leave scratch marks on the walls. Occasionally, the staff members and students who are in his mansion claim to hear faint screams and slammings on the walls. Wait, are you serious? Yet no one can find the source of these haunting noises. Are you serious? That's what the promise like, office I genuinely did not know that because I have been in the mansion at like 3 in the morning doing homework and I have heard screams. And people have heard the screams so bad that they've called public safety to go and investigate. The promise right. office at school told me that like students report that and that that is like supposed to be like CW post. Like mm. his ghost. It's like a blood curdling scream. When I was there, we went outside and walked around because we were like, oh my God, someone sounds hurt. What did they tell you when you called? I didn't call. I know people that did call. We thought someone was like hurt running around campus. I literally got goosebumps. Like I don't get, I'm not even just, I'm not even just saying this. Like I don't get goosebumps. And I literally got goosebumps just now, like on like my sides and my back. Like I literally have goosebumps. I feel fucking weird. Like I'm not just saying, I'm actually not just saying that. Like, like I feel fucking weird right now. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. Wait, let's read. This is so not what I thought it would look like inside the mansion. This is newer. This is the honors dorms. Ooh. It's getting creepier. <sighs> Yeah, I don't know if I'd want a dorm here. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Ew. I'm not tall and these ceilings are I'm almost hitting my head. Ew, I don't like it. Like I don't really get scared of things. Oh slay. But all gender restaurant. <laughs> love it. I don't really get scared of things, but like my neck hairs are like not happy right now. Which... Did you hear that? Yeah. Which... Oh, what could be? Ooh. Oh, I don't like this. I actually don't like this. No, I feel like no. Oh, I'm like no. Do, I'm like. Do you see my eyes? I'm like tearing up. Me right too. Now. I was just. Oh, where's my spirit box? Oh my gosh! No, I'm literally. We're both tearing up. That's crazy. I like. I'm not even joke. No, we opened the door. Like I opened that door and like. I had a weird feeling. This is weird. Okay, sorry. I don't know, but I hate the feeling. I'm not picking anything up. I don't, I don't want to stay in this room. I don't- No, wait. The air in that room was so thick, like- I did not like that I at all. I didn't like that. Like, I'm getting too scared to, like, stay in the building. I thought I heard something, but I don't know if it came from the spirit box or if it came from, like- I don't know. I don't want to either, like these corner rooms or... I've never been like, let's leave a place before, but I don't like that. Debrief time from being inside the mansion. 
house. Or that wasn't technically a mansion, but that was in like the little courtyard. I hit that. I felt like I was gonna cry the entire time. No, I, the second we opened that door, I swear on my life, the second we opened that door, it was like there was something inside that room that left that room. It felt like something came like out of that door and like came into the, like I, I like, I, I've done, I feel like I've done a lot of this and I've never felt something like that where it's like you open the door and there's something dark in that, like that came out of that room. Like, I don't know. I already felt like I, like I knew I wasn't supposed to be there because like, you know, it's fucking 2 a.m. and it's there. But, and most of the doors are locked. But like, it felt like something was telling me like, get out. And just the fact that like no one wanted to go with us either. They were like, we're not fucking with that place. <laughs> I wouldn't even go in the rooms. Like I would, I, I would not leave the doorway. That was, cause I had to, you know, like what if the door closed and it locked? I don't know. Or I don't know, I just couldn't go in. Like the air was, uh... No, like when we opened that door, cause we thought we heard stuff from in there and then we opened it and then right away we both like, <laughs> Trauma bond. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like it sounded like metal, like things, like yeah. But there like, was nothing like, in the room. Yeah, I was expecting it to be like, like have like filled. a random microwave, like that other room. Yeah, and there were like storage that was like clanking on each other because that's what it sounded. It like. sounded like there that. Was it did. Nothing. The, that room was fucking empty. Oh, literally empty. The campus overall gives me a little queasy feeling, but it's like, like coming back to it was weird. Like those yeah. trees, and like that's the, the winding trees. Like, it just, it's weird. It gets something happening. It's got there. a dark energy. Something happened. Yeah. There. I just feel like it's a very old campus with a lot of history and stuff that went on, and it was a private school, so I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot of history here and just weird experiences that I've seen and I know my friends have seen, and I definitely believe that there's like ghosts or some kind of kind of entity out there that be playing around with things for sure. CW Post was a very, very, very wealthy man. And I feel like, yeah, generational wealth was a thing in those times, but for you to be like that successful, you had to do some stuff to get where you had to be. Yeah, he was a middle-aged white man, so he had like supremacy or whatever, but like, and I feel you're like- And you saying that's why you think he's like, his family's cursed? Yeah, like, because he was sketched, karma. That makes sense. You know like the Winchester house? Yes, like, the exactly. Rifle, and that's like, why that family got exactly, cursed? Exactly, because it was like, you killed so many people or you were the cause of so much destruction. So honestly, cereal may be a dark business. Maybe CW Post, friend. right? Even maybe he was laundering money. Even though we literally got that stuff today, maybe it was a friend. No, exactly. I'm just saying, man.